In this video, we're going to talk about the mean or expected value and the standard deviation for a discrete probability distribution. Now, when we're talking about the mean or the expected value, we're going to calculate it similarly to the way that we calculated our mean in chapter two when we were looking at frequency tables, particularly re relative frequency tables. They're similar to relative frequency tables with the exception that the relative frequency tables tells you the percentage of times each outcome occurred as you are observing the data. The probability distribution tables that we're going to be looking at are going to tell us the percentage of times you theoretically expect that data to occur. So it's like predicting the future versus recording what happened in the past. So you can think of a relative frequency table as the history, what's happening behind you, the experiment already happened, you recorded it, you can tell how frequent something happened, and a probability distribution table is what you predict in the future to happen with an experiment. When you're evaluating the long-term results of our experiments, we want to know what the average, quote, average outcome is. This is the expected value. So when we're talking about the expected value, uh, let me do that in a different color. Let me do that in this. The expected value is the long-term mean or average. So this is what we expect to do if we do the experiment over and over again. This is what we would expect to happen as the average. This long-term average is the mean or expected value, and it is denoted by this Greek letter and you know from my previous videos, this is mu, M-U, so mu. Some of you might have wrote it down as M-E-W, like mu is a cat, but it's M-U, mu. The law of large numbers says, hey, if I do this enough times, if the number of trials I do in this experiment increases, then the difference between the predicted or theoretical probability of an event happening and the relative frequency, that is the frequency in which we observed it happening, get closer and closer together to they're almost the same thing. So in other words, we can conduct many, many trials of an experiment, and then when that happens, we would expect this outcome to be the expected average value that we would calculate, what we would predict to happen. So when we're looking at the expected value or the long-term average, again, this is mu, mu, looks like a u, but it's mu, it's Greek mu. We simply multiply each value of the random variable by its probability and add up all of those multiplications or products. The mean of a discrete random variable, this is how it is calculated. You would take mu of that random variable x this means to sum up. I'm going to take that expected, the expected value for x, what we expect is going to take on, times the probability of that actually happening. So if I were asked to compute the mean of the probability distribution in this table below, then in this column, or what I would actually do in my spreadsheet is I would put all these in my spreadsheet, and then in my spreadsheet I would use the equals, I would grab the cell that has the zero in it, and then I would multiply it by the cell that has the p of x in it, which is 0 0.06. And that's what I would put in there if I were putting this in with a spreadsheet. You can also calculate these by hand. If you are calculating these by hand by using your calculator, be sure that you write all of these down because the mean or the expected value will be the sum of all of these multiplications or products. Since I already did this, I'm just going to go ahead and write these in. So we know this first one is 0. So this was 0. The next one was 0 0.58. The next one was uh, 0 0.44. And then 0 0.3, 0 0.12, and 0 0.05. And when I sum this all up, I got 1.49. So depending on what this represented, maybe this was the number of movies somebody watches. If this is the number of movies somebody watches. This is the probability of watching zero movies that month. One movie, two movie, three, four, five movies that month. 
So if this represents movies, then the the expected value is that person would watch 1.49 movies on average. If this represented um, the, I don't know, the number of times you run to the grocery store in a day. Zero times, one time, two time, three times, four times. This is the probability of that happening. So you would expect to go to the grocery store 1.49 times a day. So whatever it represents. I have no idea what it represents, but whatever it represents. So when we're talking about the mean of a discrete random variable, it is the expected value. And the expected value is the gain or loss of an event. So you basically take the probability, multiply it by the maybe the cost or the number of times something happens and the probability of that happening. You multiply those together, which is the product, and then you add it all up. And that would be the expected value or the, quote, average. Now, if the expected value of a game is a fair game, then the expected value should be zero. In this game, the roulette, a player can place a bet of $5 on the number 17 and have a 1 in 38 um, probability of winning. If the meta ball lands on the 17, not only does that player get that $5 bet, but they also win $175. If the player loses, then the player loses $5, right? So it's kind of like the lottery, right? So the lottery is expecting you to lose. So if you, to run the numbers on, on the ability of winning the lottery, we'll do, maybe we'll do that in class. Um, you'll find that you're expected to lose money on the lottery. That makes sense because, you know, states use lotteries to make money. So let's fill out this table. We have the win, we have the lose, and the uh, outcome of winning is you're going to win $175. If you lose, you lose $5, so that's why it's a minus. So this is our X. These are the things that you, that that are values that are going to be taken on the win amount or the lose amount, just like up above it was the video amount or the number of times you go to the store. How many videos do you watch? How many times do you go to the store? And then the probability of that event happening. Well, the probability of the event happening that you win is 1 in 38. Well, I'm going to put this in as a decimal. And when I put it in as a decimal, I have 0 0.0256. So that's the probability of you winning. Now, the probability of losing is 1 minus winning, so 1 minus the 1 over 38. Well, then that is 0 0.9744. So you have a 97% chance of losing and a 2.5% chance of winning. Now, to find the expected value, I'm going to take the item that is in the X column and multiply it by the probability of that happening. So the X times P of X in the win is 4.48. The x times p of x for the lose is negative 4.872. So the expected value or the average, this mu, which is average, which is expected value, is going to be the sum of this column. And the expected value is a negative 0 0.392. Now you're thinking, Huh, I'm only out 39 cents. No, no. That's what you're expected to lose on average for every game you play. Every time you lose, you lose five bucks. Every time you win, you win $175. So you're thinking, okay, so if the company who's doing the roulette wheel only makes 40 cents on me, how are they making money? Well, say somebody played that roulette or multiple roulettes were going all at the same time. For every thousand times that that roulette wheel is spinning, the expected value, if you did it a thousand times, would be $392 to gain for the company, and you would expect to lose $392. Another place that uses expected values is um, insurance policies. I'm not saying don't get an insurance policy. That's definitely not what I'm saying. But insurance policies are betting on you living, right? Because if they bet it on you dying, they're not going to make any money. 
So a term life insurance policy pays a beneficiary a certain amount of money if the policyholder dies. There are premiums that have to be paid, typically annually, sometimes they're monthly. Suppose the life insurance company sells a $250,000 one-year life insurance policy to a 49-year-old person for $530. According to the National Vital Statistics Report, Volume 47, Number 28, the probability of a female surviving the year of that age is 0.99791. So in other words, the 49-year-old female is a 99.79% chance that that person will survive the year. So you are now the policy insurance policy company. So if the person dies, oops, let me use this. If the person dies and if the person lives are the two choices that you have because you're doing a, a life insurance policy. Okay, so this is X, and this is P of X, and then for the expected value, we need X multiplied by P of X, our product of those two. So if the person lives, the insurance policy makes $530. And the probability of that happening is 0.99791. Now, the probability of that person dying is going to be 1 minus, because we always know the opposite is 1 minus 0.99791. So the probability of that person dying is 0 0.00209. So the probability of that person dying is very, very slim. Like, it's less than 1% of that person dying. If the insurance company, if they, if that person died, they don't lose two hundred and fifty thousand dollars because they've already gained the premium. What they lose is two hundred and fifty. So what's going to go here is the two hundred and fifty they have to pay out minus that five hundred and thirty they already gained from that person that paid for it. So this will be two hundred and forty nine thousand four hundred and seventy dollars is how much that's going to be. Now, our last column is when we multiply these two together. And so when I multiply these two together, um, the person dying is going to be a negative $521.39. If the person lives, that's going to be $528.89. And then what is the expected value? The company is expected to make $7.50 on every one of those premiums that they sell. So again, insurance companies are expecting you to live. And so every time you do live, they have just made $750 on you, basically. Now, when we compute the standard deviation of a discrete random variable, it's going to be similar to the way that we did this when we did our grouped frequency tables in chapter two where we did the grouped frequency table and then we did the, the uh, standard deviation. Our standard deviation in this chapter is uh, sigma. That is pronounced sigma, sigma, let me do that, sigma, sigma. And you're thinking, why isn't that for population? Well, it kind of is because of the way we're doing a discrete random variable. It is an experiment, but it's not a sample. So it's a sigma, sigma sub x, x being whatever it is, like the number of videos you watch or the amount of money. That's what x represents, the random variable x. P of x is the probability of it happening. And so what we're going to do is like we did in chapter two when we found our grouped frequency, used our grouped frequency tables to figure out what our not sigma was, but S was. We knew that we had to take the square root after we summed that last column because if we didn't take the square root, that was our variance. Well, now our variance is gonna be similar. We're just gonna call it sigma squared. So you can see here, we have it as sigma squared. That's our variance. All right, so let's fill in this table. As before, we're going to need another column, which is x times p of x. And then we'll need our deviations, which is going to be x minus our mean. This our mean now is mu sub x squared. And then we need one additional column in which we take that column entries 
and multiply it by our probability of that happening. Okay, so we actually did this x times p of x up above. So we did it very, we first started out with, so I'm just gonna write them down really fast again. So the first one was zero, next one was 0 0.58, the next one was 0 0.44, next one 0 0.03, 0 0.12, 0 0.05, and we knew that it's mean, which is mu, mu sub x, this is our mean, we found to be 1.49. Now mu, 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 or you might have wrote on your paper M-E-W like a cat mu, but it's mu. This is the mean or expected value, mean expected value. Make sure you write that down somewhere. So what is the mean for these? These are the expected value, they are the same thing. It's pronounced mu. Now we're gonna do our deviations and I did all this already. So I have, for the first entry, 2.2201, uh, 0 0.2401, 0 0.2601, uh, 2, that's a 2, let me erase that, that's a 2, should be 2, 2.2801, 2 6.3001, and then that last one, which is 12.2. Three, two, uh, zero, one. Now, if this is column B, C, this is D, this is E, in our spreadsheet, what we would have done was we would have done an equal symbol, we would have done a parenthesis, we would have grabbed, say this is one, two, so this is B2, so B2 minus, and looks like it's D, one, two, three, four, five, six, D6. And then we would have done the caret button, the shift six key, and then two. That's how we would have got those. Now remember, since we like to go to that bottom corner and drag, that we're gonna put a dollar symbol before the D and after the D, if this is D six. That way, when we pull and drag it down, it's always grabbing this cell. All right, so then we would add this last column here. And in this last column, what we would be doing then is we would do an equals and we would do our E2 multiplied by the cell that would have had our C2 in it, and then we'd have just pulled and dragged all of that down. Now, I already did this, so I'm just gonna put the answers in there. My first number is 0 0.133206. I know, I'm giving you a lot of decimals. Uh, typically, run out to four or five, just depends on what the homework says. Um, so let me back up a minute. Pay attention to what the homework says. Traditionally, if the answer is two decimal places, all calculations should be twice as many of that until you get to the very end in which you round. So if the answer says four decimal places, you should actually round out to eight in all of these steps, these intermediate steps that I'm doing until I get very end. Now, if you're using an Excel spreadsheet, it's gonna run all those decimal places out anyways. So, 0 0.139258, 0 0.05722, 0 0.22801, 0 0.189003, and then my last one is 0. 123201. When I sum up this column, this is sigma sub x squared. This is the variance. Okay, that's my variance. I'm looking for the standard deviation. So when I sum up this, when I sum up this entire column, I'm getting this answer right here is sigma squared or the variance. What I want is a standard deviation. So I could do SQRT in my spreadsheet and then I could grab that cell and put it in there or I could raise it to the one half. Whatever you're gonna do, you can put in your calculator, the square root of it. And then my sigma, which is my, my standard deviation, I found to be for this example, which is 0 0.93296864, excuse me, 684. And there is my sigma. 
So like I said, is that you're going to probably want to build a probability distribution calculator um, for this chapter. So I have it here. I tell you this is a chapter four, a distribution calculator, expected value, mu, which equals the mean, which equals expected value, which equals the sum of x times the column x times p. Now, the reason I'm doing all that is so that when I go back later and say, okay, my homework's asking me for the mean. Then they're asking me for the expected value. What are the difference? Oh, it's the same thing. Sigma, which is the standard deviation. The sigma is the way you pronounce it. It's the standard deviation. It is the square root of the sum. In this case, which was my column D. So wherever my sigma was, which was in column D. So this must be column D. Okay. Now this stuff you don't actually need. That was for something else. I just screen captured a, my spreadsheet. but the, the, So you don't need those. So you would have your X column, and notice I like to have green, so I know that these are things that I'm gonna put in. This is already set up. So if this is my column A, B, C, D, E, then I would have put in this one, I would have done E, and say this is one, two, three, four, five. I would have done E, excuse me, B, five, multiplied by my C, five, and then I would have gone to the corner here and then I would have to drag it all the way down to the bottom. And then here, at the very bottom here, I have got mu, which again is my mean or expected value. And the way I did that is I summed this column. So I did uh, the sum as the call and then I just made sure I highlighted this column to here so I can get in my mu. So this is gonna calculate it for me every time. All I have to do is put in values here. That's why they're green. And then this will always calculate my mu for me as I do my homework or do my, my quiz. This column, I actually, um, I did it in one, but if you want to put a second column here, I did it all at once. I did mu, I did this mu, multi subtracting this x squared multiplied by that p. So this is what I did as the call, is in this cell, I did an, I did an equal symbol, I did a parenthesis, again, assuming I'm ABC, is I would have done um, my B5 minus my mu. So let me see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So this cell right here, which is the 17th position, put it on a dollar symbol, D, dollar symbol, 17, parenthesis, raise it to a power of 2, and then I would multiply it by my probability, which was C5. And then what I would have done after I did enter, right, I would have gone down to that bottom corner and I would have drug it all the way down to the bottom there. And then for this, what I would have done is I would have done an equals. I would have used the call SQRT. Then I would have actually used sum again. So I would have used SUM capital. I would have grabbed that from here, from here to here, and put that in there. And that would have gave me my sigma, which is, you know, the square root. And then this one, of course, is just, again, I don't need to take the square root, so I would have just typed in sum equals sum, and then I would have grabbed these numbers, again, highlighted those numbers, and hit enter. And so this is your expected value of a probability distribution. And I didn't actually put that um, other column. You can put your, uh, your column that we did up above here, the um, mu x minus mu of x squared. I just did it all at once. You can do whatever you want. But that's it for this video, and we'll see you in class.